Hello, my friends. Hope you're doing well. Uh, I'm back today with a Luminar Neo video, and I'm going to be diving into one specific tool and showing how if you really master your ability to control this tool and apply it specifically in, in a targeted way, how you can really end up with a very beautiful photo as a result. Um, I'm finding that my editing in Luminar Neo is changing. My style is kind of changing. My approach to editing is sort of changing. And I'm working on some things, uh, some videos and some ideas, even some courses where I may be going into that in a bit more depth. So if you haven't yet joined my newsletter, you can do that at the link below. I'll be sharing information on this stuff as soon as it's ready. But there's a lot of things I've been working on I'm eager to share with you all. Uh, let's go ahead and get into this photo. Here I am, and this is a morning shot from the beautiful city of Prague. And if you had a guess that Develop and Develop Raw was the tool that I was going to be talking about, hey, you're right. 10 points for Gryffindor. That is the tool I'm going to be talking about because it is the one tool to rule them all. It gives you more control than anything else. And I want to walk through how you can use just this one tool to really get a beautiful and complete edit. So let me go ahead and open this up and you can see here I'm just going to do some basic stuff. I had a little bit of contrast, slightly pull on the highlights, slightly lift the shadows. I'm just trying to get a little bit of a balanced image even though as uh, part of this video, I'm going to be changing the light around quite a bit in different parts of the image. I like to start with a flatter base image. So yes, some of my future moves will kind of undo some of this. But I don't know why. It's just part of my sort of um, approach, I guess, for lack of a better word. So I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to maybe bump the uh, whites a tiny bit and bump the blacks a little bit as well. And I'm going to go into temperature, maybe a tiny slight bit warmer, a slight bit Bit more vibrant. I just don't want to do a lot there. And uh, excuse me, uh, I said temperature uh, warmer and a more of a tint, but also I am going to add a little bit of vibrance. Um, I tend to prefer to do most of my color stuff a little bit later, so I'm not going to do a lot here. And I'm going to go to about 20. And I also want to go into curves. And uh, you know, I've been mentioning that I may do a curves video. If you'd like to uh, hear about that, leave me a comment down below. Basically, just a slight S curve. All it does is add a little bit of contrast and let me show you the before and after there it is before and there it is now so already a better looking result but I've got a lot I want to do I'm gonna go ahead and close this tool and go in to my second instance of it okay here we go this is instance number two of develop and what I'm gonna do in this video is use mask to really control where my edits go and I think that's an incredibly important part of editing is target what you want to do and the way you target things is first you make a plan um, I've already made a plan for this photo so my targets and how I want to approach things is kind of figured out but what I want to do is create a little bit of a vignette and so what I'm going to do is come in here with a radial gradient, which is, you know, effectively a circular kind of shape, depending on how you adjust it. If you want a video on masking, let me know. I'm working on some ideas there in terms of how I'm now incorporating more masking into my workflow. So again, leave a comment if that sounds interesting to you. And um, I'm going to do something about like that. I want to go a little bit low in the street. And all I'm going to do is, by the way, the red part is where my adjustment is going to take place and the part that's not red is where it will not take place so all I'm going to do is come in and slightly drop the exposure maybe about like that all I'm doing is kind of darkening the edges it's a vignette is what it really is slight vignette just from that to that because I really want to focus on your eye going down this street and some of the peripheral stuff is not important to me. So in that uh, vein, I'm closing develop. I'm going to open it again. And what I want to do is get a mass, this time a linear gradient instead of a radial. And all I'm going to do is just drop that right here in the foreground because again, I want your eye to go through the scene and follow the photo down the street or follow the street, uh, have your eye look down the street. You know what I'm saying. I want to go that way. I mean, there's a beautiful thing like a church at the end, the very base uh, foreground right there. I don't care a whole lot about it. It's okay with me if it's a little bit darker. And so what I'm going to do is make it a little bit darker. So slight drop in exposure, um, a slight bump in contrast. I don't want to overdo it. But if you look at the before, the before is a little bit lighter and the current state is a little bit darker. And I think that's looking good. So again, close develop and once more open develop and now I'm going to go get another radial gradient and this is kind of how my workflow is evolving is using these masks to be super 
uh, super targeted and specific. And what I want to do here is actually invert because the changes I'm going to make are going to go within this circle instead of on the outside. And I say circle, and I know this shape is not actually going to be a circle, but it's roundish. How about that? My roundish kind of uh, shape, uh, more of an oval, I guess, kind of egg shape sort of thing going on. But that's what I want to do. And now that I've got that in place, what I want to do is bring up the look of the light, uh, the street lights, how they're reflecting on these cobblestones. And so light is bright. Therefore, I'm going to slightly increase the exposure. Like you don't want to go too far because that looks crazy. So I'm going to reset that to zero and I'm going to go just a little bit, you know, like maybe a 12 or 13, something like that. I just want to be careful. If you add a little bit of contrast, that might uh, actually slightly help. Uh, I'm going to go a little bit higher in exposure. This is experimental, by the way. I did not really write down specific numbers about what I wanted to do. I just wrote down steps. Uh, I'm going to come over here to the uh, the temperature and I'm going to warm that up a little bit. And that's only going to be like a three or something because if you go very warm, it's going to look really out of place. It's just way too golden if you go really warm. So another thing to think about when you're editing is little steps, especially if you do a lot of them, which is a, kind of what I'm doing here little steps add up to be a lot of an edit at the end. Baby step it, for lack of a better word. So I think that looks pretty good. I'm just trying to figure out here if I want to do any other things. Now keep in mind, you can always go back into this edit tab and further refine things if you want to later. I'm not going to be doing that here, I don't think, unless I mess something up or change my mind, which is distinctly possible, I might add. But I'm going to just take a look at this. Uh, there we go before. Very blue. It was blue hour. This was super early in the morning, like you know, maybe 6 a.m. in Prague. There it is before. And there it is now slightly warmer and slightly brighter, which kind of makes sense to me. And again, season to taste. Every image is going to be different, of course. Uh, now I'm going to come back with another linear uh, gradient. And this time I'm going to start over here on the right-hand side. All I'm doing is kind of slightly darkening. And I want to make sure that's tilted because it kind of follows the line of kind of how the uh, the brickwork here is curving. But I want to make this kind of a gradual transition from darker to lighter. And now that I've got that set up, I'm going to come in here and just slightly darken that, you know, maybe something like negative uh, one ish, right? Something like that. Again, you can always come back and change it later if you want to. But there it is before a lot more visibility in that stonework. And there it is now quite a bit darker, which is really going to help focus the eye because I don't care about a viewer looking at the stonework. Oh, cool. There's old stones, which are beautiful, and I love them. Not really a key part of the photograph. They're basically a frame, and the frame looking darker, I think, looks good. Now that I've done that on the right side, I'm going to do the same thing on the left side. So linear gradient. I'm going to come over here, and again, slightly tilted, slightly gradual. The only thing I want to be careful of here is I don't want it to bleed too heavily into the rays around this uh, street light because I don't want it to be like an abrupt, oh, it's dark. Hey, it's light. I just want it to be kind of gradual. I didn't really have that same problem. Uh, um, problem's probably not the right word, but I didn't have the same situation on that other side. So here may be slightly more gradual and back it up a little bit away. So you can see it's kind of fading into that light pretty gently. And adjustments, and again, just season to taste. I'm going to drop this. I'm at about, let's see, negative seven or so. Um, I'm not picking the same numbers on the same sides. It looks about the same to me. I think that's what matters is how does it look and not are the numbers matching up? Because I don't really care what the numbers are, to be honest. I'm editing by feel, not by science, right? So there it is before, quite a bit brighter. And there it is now. And I think that looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. Now, another thing I want to do is work on the sky. And I can do that in develop. I'm not going to replace the sky. That would be sky AI down here. I want to work on the sky. And that's where I go into masking. And now I'm using mask AI. And I'm going to use mask AI in combination with a brush mask. So I'm using every kind of mask on this photo. And again, targeted specific, being very controlled about what I want to do. So I'm going to click sky and you're going to see it's going to isolate that sky for me. And here's the thing. It doesn't always get every little bit that's perfect around the edges. Here's what I recommend is go back into mask and now get brush and drop the strength to, you know, maybe 40, low 40, something like that. Shrink my mouse. And all I'm going to do is come in here and paint along these edges so that I cover up some of that missed area, but I don't cover it up 
completely. So it's a little bit of a gradual transition. If I did not do anything, and then the next move that I make, which is gonna be to adjust some things in the sky, of course, that's why I'm making this mask, the edges there where you see the mask didn't quite um, get to the perfect side, perfect edge, it would look funny uh, is, is the bottom line. So I'm coming in with a brush to basically touch up these edges, right? And that's kind of what this comes down to. And again, it's all about the transition. I want it to look like the sky uh, wasn't uh, inaccurately masked. Um, it's okay with me if it's not 100%. And the reason I do a gradual versus 100% is because, as you can see, I'm also overlapping the building. And in doing so, if I came in at 100%, it would be very abrupt. And so in other words, if you do it at 100%, you have to be exactly precise. I'm not necessarily, when I'm masking things like this, I don't feel I have to be 100% precise because I'm using a lower strength brush. It's kind of like using that fade that I did on the sides of this image with a linear gradient. It basically allows me to kind of gradually make uh, have the adjustments fade into the buildings, right? From the sky to the buildings. Hope that makes sense. But what I want to do here is go into adjustments. And what I want to do is slightly darken this. So I'm going to drop that exposure a little bit. And this is what I'm talking about. If I drop this exposure but did not do the brush masking around the edges, you would see very clearly that, oh, most of the sky is dark, but around the edges, there, there's a bright spot. It would look like a halo, like a bad HDR job. And I'm not into having a bad HDR job. I want to have a nice, smooth transition. So to me, that's a really, really key thing. Now, while I'm at it, I'm slightly going to drop the temperature. In other words, make it more blue. So I'm kind of making this a little bit deeper looking blue hour kind of shot. And I'm also going to take the tint and increase that. And again, I'm just in the sky, remember. I'm basically adjusting the color. So if you look at the before and the current state, deeper, darker blue because it's darker because I dropped the exposure and it's more blue because I dropped the temperature, but it also has a little bit of tint, which I think kind of works here. You don't want to get too high on the tint in a blue sky because you end up with clouds that are kind of pink, and honestly, it kind of looks kind of good, to be honest, but I'm not going to go that high. I don't remember what I was at. I'm actually going to go a little bit higher, perhaps. It also, to me, softens the blue a little bit, and I don't want to have like an electric blue, like, oh my God, look at this blue sky, but I definitely want it to be a little bit bluer. Slightly going to drop uh, or increase that temp. I don't want to overdo it, and I slightly may increase the exposure because again I don't want to overdo it but if you look at the before of the sky and the current state I think the mask edges look good where you sky AI masking first and then use the brush to touch up those edges I think that transition just works really well and I'm done with that and there's really just one thing left and that's going to be come in and just do an overall kind of a final touch up for lack of a better word which for me is going to be a little bit of smart contrast I'm going to pull down the highlights I'm slightly going to lift the shadows so again, this is all kind of just playing it by ear, going by feel, basically I'm looking at the image. I don't have an exact plan like, oh, I have to do this, or this is step one or step two in terms of any particular thing. It's all kind of by feel. Get the masks in place, get them accurate, and then make your adjustments. But if you look at the before and after, I think I'm actually going to lift some of those shadows a little bit more. And I'm going to come over here and slightly lift the blacks as well, giving a little bit more brightness back to the image, which actually is undoing some of the things that I did. But again, I'm going by feel here. I'm not going by, oh, darn it, I'm so dumb. I backed up uh, you know, a step that I did earlier or reversed it. People ask me why I do that, and it's because I'm editing by how the photo looks. And I don't want to go back three steps to which develop tool is that three or four steps ago and make adjustments. I just want to move forward and leave my, my past behind me, for lack of a better word. So there it is before this final use of develop. And again, this is a global use, meaning no masks. I'm just completely... Um, covering the entire photo with this use of develop. But there it is before, there it is now, and now that I've done that, I actually think I'm gonna pull some of those shadows back. So something about like that. Let me show you where we started with this photo. And you know, I, I'm gonna be honest here, I might go use a couple of other tools to get a final, final edit. I do need to use the erase tool, there's a couple of spots in the sky, but I might would be tempted to use a little bit of super contrast or a tiny bit of Accent AI just to give it a little bit of pop. Um, and certainly do that, I'm not saying you only have to use develop because of course you have all these amazing tools in Luminar Neo that you can use but if you master the use of develop and use masks and all these kind of specific adjustments to really craft the shape of the light and the overall look of the photo you can make a huge difference in your photo so if you're gonna 
learn one tool and really get good at it, I highly recommend that it become develop and develop raw if you're using a raw file, of course. Let me show you the before. There it is before, a little bit flatter, a little bit darker, not as vibrant, beautiful scene. I shot at a tight aperture, so I got those kind of starburst in the lights. This is a raw file. I did not add the magic light. It's just because I was shooting at a tight aperture that I got all those lights kind of with those little starburst effect. But that's before, and that's now, and that's essentially a full edit using one tool, which is develop. So highly recommend that you check that out, and I'll be back doing more things. If you have questions about this technique, uh, or like I said, want to learn more about the things that I'm working on, join my newsletter. That link is down below. Thanks for watching, my friends. I hope you're doing really well. I'll be back soon with more videos. You guys take care, and until then, adios.